I'm Elizabeth Merrick. I am 31. I am Pacific Islander slash white. I live in gorgeous Portland, Oregon, and I am the next great baker. How would you describe your personality? My personality, ADD, OCD, OMG. I'm like crazy. I am super busy. I am doing tons of stuff all the time. And people always say, slow down, slow down, take a break. And then I'm like, I'm bored. So I like to be really busy. I'm really passionate about everything that I do, but I do kind of tend to get bored. But you know, whatever, it's my life. How would your friends describe you? I would say my friends describe me as really busy. Um, they probably would say that I'm a lot of fun. I'm always trying new things and I'm super passionate about everything that I do. And you know, I think they'd probably say I was pretty nice. Now, how would your toughest, dis how would your toughest critics describe you? The, 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 <laughs> uh, I would say that my toughest critics would say that I can be a little bit stubborn. Uh, I can be a little sarcastic, a little bit pushy, but you know, I just want to get stuff done. I'm, you know, I can be fun and I can be relaxed, but when you got to get shit done, I want it done, like right now. I don't want to hear excuses. And I certainly don't want to tell you twice how to do your job. Like I know how to do my job, you do your job. And I don't know, that just rubs people the wrong way sometimes. It's a mystery. What would you say is your best quality? My best quality, I would say, is that I am extremely resourceful. No matter what you give me, what tools I have, wherever I am, I will figure it out and get the job done no matter what. Like, it doesn't even phase me to have like a weird situation thrown at me. Okay, and now what's your worst quality? My worst quality is probably that I do not have a lot of patience when it comes to other people. Like, I could sit at a cake all night long, make it perfect, obsess over details, and it's no big deal. But if you're taking forever and I needed this done like an hour ago, I am gonna be like all up in your butt, you know, just like writing you, telling you what the heck, hurry it up because I just want it done. All I can think of is that I would have had this done like an hour ago. So, you know, I try to be patient, I try to be understanding, but if, if, if there's like stress and pressure, that, that tends to make me a little on edge, but you know. What types of people or things push your buttons? You know, I don't like arrogant people. I mean, I understand if you got skills and you want to show them off, but I just can't stand anybody in general, not just cake decorators, who post stuff online and they're like, look at this awesome thing I did. It's so great. And to be honest, it looks like shit. So everybody, of course, on their friends are like, it looks so awesome. You're so great. You're so perfect. And nobody says, good job, but you might want to improve on this thing. Like, it's it seems annoying to me for people to have false confidence and to be really proud. And you should be proud of what you're trying to do, but you should always be open to criticism. And if anybody ever says, hey, you might want to improve on this, and I'm like, F you, I'm the best. I don't need any criticism. I think that's annoying and stupid. How do you feel you react to criticism? I hate it. I hate getting criticism, but I respect it. I appreciate it. I, you know, I think everybody is annoyed when somebody criticizes their stuff, especially if you're type A like me, you want things to be perfect the first time. But whenever somebody says, hey, that could be a little bit better, at first I'm annoyed because I'm like, dang it, they're right. But then you fix the problem, you make it look better, and then in the end, you're much prouder about what you did anyway. So, you know, I appreciate criticism, but... I don't really enjoy it. <laughs> it's necessary. If you've watched any episodes of Next Great Baker, which cast members do you re relate to most and why? I really relate to Marissa. I think she is just awesome. I think that we have a lot of things in common. We both applied to season one and didn't make it, but she had the balls to apply to season two. And then after I saw her kick ass on season two, I was like, I really need to apply to season three. So I think Marissa's cool and she's awesome and I'm gonna be the next Marissa. Tell us about your background and upbringing. Hmm, that's kind of a long story. So I'll try and, you know, explain as much as I can without getting too far into it, but I may ramble. I kind of ramble sometimes. 
So I don't usually talk about my background or past because not a lot of people relate to it and I don't, I don't like people who feel sorry for me or anything, but for the sake of this, I feel like I should explain how my past has made me who I am and, and why that motivates me so much. And you know, okay, so when I was growing up, my mom was sick my whole life. Um, they didn't really know what was wrong with her. She was in and out of the hospital a lot, but she was never herself. You know, she was always like not healthy. And that left me to sort of take care of my sisters and not to mention be without a mom. And my dad was away a lot working and supporting his family. And that was basically my up upbringing. That's, that's all it was about. And then when I, when I gr grew up, I was kind of an angry teenager and moved out and sort of just didn't know where I was going or what I was doing and, and wasn't really focused in my life until really until I went to college I never really had anything that I loved and nothing that I really like stuck with me and I didn't really realize that I could actually do something and succeed at it but even after discovering that I never really felt like happy I never really felt like fulfilled in my life so you know as the years go on uh, we discover that the, the disease that my mom had is, is genetic, it's hereditary, and it's passed on to your children. So not only does she have it, but my older brother, who's 11 years older than me, he has it. My older sister, who's 10 years older than me, she has it. And then my younger sister, I have two younger sisters, one of them has it. And so out of all of us, only two of us don't have this disease. And that's really hard on a person, you think, What's going to happen to me? What's my future going to be like, you know, when you're dealing with your family members who seemingly don't really have like a future? And so I thought a lot about like, I didn't know my mom and I, I don't have anything that's left from her. I, I don't have any recipes from her. I don't have any clothes or jewelry or stories about how she was when she was younger. And who knows, you know, even though I, if I don't have this disease, who knows what's going to happen to me. And if my children will ever know me and they'll, I want to leave them like a story. I want them to, even if they didn't know me, to know who I was and what I love to do. And they would feel proud of me, even if they, they never had a chance to know me. And so winning the next great baker doesn't just mean being able to start a bakery or being able to support my family or even doing what I love. Like, I wanna have what Buddy has and where he he has a family legacy and something to leave behind to future generations. And that's really important to me. And I feel like that, that sets me apart from the other people. And um, how do you feel your past has helped or hurt um, become the person that you are today? I feel like everybody has a past and it either helps them or it pushes them and I at one point I had to make a decision that was either like my past is going to break me and I'm just gonna fall into a deep depression and never and just blame my whole sucky life on hard things that I went through or you can choose to use it as a weapon and that's what I choose to do. I choose to use every hard thing I've ever gone through as a weapon to push me even harder and I won't let anything hold me back. So I feel like even though I didn't choose this life, I feel like it makes me stronger and better because of it. Do you feel your skills are better than the previous contestants on season one and two? Of course I do. Who would apply to the next season of Next Great Baker and didn't think that they could beat everybody who's been on the previous shows? I mean, whenever I watch the show, I just literally sit there and go, why did they do that? I could have done that better. I would have done this. That was a terrible mistake. So, of course, I think that I could beat everybody who's been on previous seasons. Okay, and then how elaborate and creative are your designs? Is there any special skills you have like 3D sculpting, pyrotechnics, sugar work, etc.? 
my all my designs are really elaborate and I try to put in a ton of detail and I use a lot of reference material so my details are always a lot more realistic than other people's might be and I have a secret skill of being able to do really fine figure work really realistic features on people um, I've, I've sculpted a lot randomly, so I feel like that's sort of my secret rep weapon. If somebody needed me to bust out something super fast that was really realistic, I could do that. Tell us about your food industry experience. I have had a lot of food jobs, but my first actual job in the food industry was working as a cake decorator at Safeway. And then after that, I worked as a bread baker slash sweets baker at Great Harvest until I got enough experience to open up my own cake decorating company, which I've been doing for the last four years. And then like halfway through that, I was like, oh, I should probably go to college and like learn actual baking techniques from real chefs. So I uh, picked up, packed up my company and went to uh, Oregon Culinary Institute, got my baking and pastry degree and uh, learn some really important foundation steps and I've been baking and decorating ever since. Do you have cake decorating, baking, or pastry experience and list all the things that you've done? I have no experience. I don't even know what this video is about. <laughs> I do. I have lots of experience. I don't have like 50 years of experience, but I, um, you know, my first decorating job was well, okay, so first I took a, a job, or I mean, first I took a class, a wilt and decorating class, because I thought, oh, that's what people do. And that was really simple and fun. And then I thought, well, I'll get a job at Safeway decorating cakes like in a real bakery. And then I got the job and was like, this is not real baking <laughs> and not real decorating. So I quit that and I got a job at Great Harvest Bakery where I like woke up at two o'clock in the morning, every morning, zombie walked my way to the bakery and baked from 2 a.m. till 10 a.m. And that was really fun, but super hard work. And I ended up getting like tendonitis, so I had to quit that job. But I just, at this point, had fallen in love with baking and decorating. So I started my own company, which I've been doing for the last four years. And about a year into that, I decided to go back to school for culinary and baking and pastry to learn the real basics and develop a foundation for baking and, and decorating. And here I am. Describe your construction and technical abilities. Um, I would say that I don't have any formal training with construction or making cakes or figuring out how to do it. It's kind of a learning process. I spend a lot of time in Home Depot looking at PVC and fittings and just like sticking them together and imagining like how the process is going to look in the end and after you do that a few times you just sort of like figure out what works and what doesn't work. Okay so um, what's the hardest cake you've designed and made? Um, I would say one of the hardest cakes I ever made was these three houses that I did for like a real estate event and they were like you know big cakes like about this big square and they wanted them stacked on top of each other and I misinterpreted how heavy the cakes were gonna be so I had like 50 pound cakes on top of each other with like a PVC pipe that's about this big and I had to screw them onto each other in front of everybody at the event and the whole thing's going like this and I just smile, yeah, everything's gonna be great. Oh my God, please don't fall, please don't fall. But you know, in the end it was perfect. Everybody loved it, but I had never left a venue so fast. Just get me out of here. If it falls, I don't wanna be here. <laughs> Is there a specific genre of food or desserts you like to bake or cook? Other than making cakes, I do my savor cake cart where I make savory cupcakes per se and um, as far as other desserts go I really really like making pies I like using really fresh fruits really fresh ingredients and I don't know it's just something about like a peach pie with like a swoop of ice cream this is like oh yeah you know? and what uh, what type of food do you hate um foods that I hate are just like anything that's made with like fake stuff I don't, I don't know I just can't get behind using things like shortening or like margarine replacements definitely no box cake mixes nothing like that like 
it just kind of seems like, why even bother if you're going to do that? How elaborate and creative are your designs when baking? I always try to make my designs as elaborate and creative as possible. If somebody asks for a simple cake, I always try and convince them to do an elaborate cake. For example, I got asked to do a um, turntable DJ cake and they wanted it to look like a kind of an old-fashioned turntable. And of course, I had to say, what if the record was actually spinning and what if it actually had lights and they were like okay that sounds great can you actually do that and i'm like yeah i can do that thinking in my head i could probably do that <laughs> so i ended had no idea how to make an actual motor so i went to like a hobby store and like asked a bunch of questions about you know how you make a motor and then i had no idea how i was going to get the record to actually spin so i thought in my head well what can i use to like customize something that could hold a record and I used Legos. So a like hobby motor plus Legos equals a spinning record on a turntable. Okay and then um, do, you, do you use like airbrushing and pyrotechnics and stuff like that or? I haven't ever really used any pyrotechnics in my cakes. I hear that they make the cake taste bad so if I were to do a cake that was just for show I would probably use pyrotechnics but I've definitely made cakes move, I've made them light up, I use lots of airbrushing all the time. I think that's a great way to add dimension. And um, I think that probably the most elaborate, like, mechanical cake that I ever made was probably the DJ turntable cake. Tell us any interesting details about yourself or anything that makes you stand out. Um, I think that something that makes me stand out uh, amongst other bakers and cake decorators in general is I actually uh, spent years being a graphic designer and I graduated with my graphic design degree and was an art director for a few years before I actually moved on to cake decorating. And that's really taught me a lot about not only time management, and but understanding how to run my own business and uh, understanding things like scale, proportion, color theory. I mean, a cake is what else but a design project and you want it to look visually appealing. You also want to make your client happy and you're basically selling a design to a client. So I feel like my design degree has given me an advantage over other decorators where I can basically take an idea from the client, make it into something in my head and then produce it in 3D. Not everybody can do that. Where do you get your recipes from? I have to make them up as I go because my dad was not really that great of a cook and um, you know he grew up in New Zealand where basically it's like meat and potatoes every day, put it in a pot until it's done, that's it. There's not really anything to it. So ever since I went to culinary school and learned like the basics of recipe construction, like spices and chemical balances and things like that, I can't stop like experimenting and I think that's you know the basis of how new recipes are born. So this is my recipe book. <laughs> it's not very organized and as you can see at one point I accidentally set it on fire but I just can't like part with it. It's my recipes. I'm attached to them so I probably should retype these up and like reorganize them but I don't know there's something kind of nice about my like re recipes that show like all the wear and tear and stuff. How do you put your own personal twist on the recipes? Um, I just, you know, start off with a recipe. I spend a lot of time on Pinterest and I'm like, mmm, that looks good. Ooh, that looks delicious. And sometimes it looks really good and then you try it out and you're like, who thought this was good? This is like gummy or like the texture's gross or it's like super salty. And so that's usually when I think, you know what this needs is like rosemary or you know what this needs is not to use packaged ranch mix, you know? So that's, I mean, that's kind of how a recipe starts and then I just kind of base, go from there based off of my own like tastes and stuff. How would you rate your skill level, beginner, average, or expert when it comes to baking? I would definitely say I am above average. I don't know everything there is to know about baking. I've baked a lot of different types of things, but there's always room to improve, so above average. Okay, and what about decorating, like traditional buttercream and oh, fondant techniques? expert. I mean, come on. That's what I'm here for. That's what I do. Buttercream, fondant, that's my A game. Expert. And what about pastries and desserts? I would say above average on that too. Like I've done some really good pastries and I've done some really good traditional uh, desserts, but I don't know everything there is to know. So above average. What in your opinion 
makes a great cake decorator? I think the one thing that you have to do to be a, the one thing you have to be to be a great cake, cake a great cake decorator is you gotta have passion and enunciation also helps. But uh, yeah, no, seriously, if you don't like really, really believe in what you're doing and you don't like love every second of it, including dealing with the clients, having to redo cakes, having to stress out about time constraints, then it's not gonna be worth it for you. Like you have to love what you are doing. Okay, so what makes someone a bad baker? I think if you're a bad baker, if you just aren't willing to like learn new things, you have to always be like checking blogs, picking up the latest magazines, and constantly immersing yourself in the knowledge of the cake decorating world. How do you think you'll handle quick fire baker challenges and working in a group for bigger challenges? I think I'm gonna rock it. I mean, I, I watched the show and I feel like that I would do really good because I just, I handle pressure well. I sometimes will freak out after the fact and before the fact, but during I am like, I am good to go. That's when I'm, I'm on fire. Uh, what do you think will be your strengths and weaknesses? I think that my strengths are, I am able to put my stress aside, like outside of my brain and just like get stuff done. But on the like downside of that, I tend to be a little like short. I can be not very patient with other people's timelines. Like I want everybody to be working like as fast as I am and getting stuff done like as fast as I am. So I can get a little snippy. What kind of role do you generally play in groups? I am generally the teacher slash leader. I like to help. <laughs> I like to tell people what they're doing wrong and to be perfectly blunt. Um, but no, seriously, like if somebody's struggling, I will be the first one to go there and be like, hey, if you do it this way, that might make it a little bit easier. But I also, you know, if you don't want my help, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. Because if you're doing a bad job, I'm, it's hard for me to let that go. Are you competitive in nature? Yes, very competitive. I used to think that being competitive was bad, but after like entering and winning so many competitions, it's like I had to finally admit, hi, my name is Liz and I'm addicted to competition, <laughs> you know? So I don't think it's a bad thing, but I think it drives you to work harder and test yourself and push your limits. So there's nothing wrong with being competitive. What is your message that you want to give the competition? My message, um, I am no threat at all. I'm perfectly innocent. I would never connive against you or scheme or uh, make alliances behind your back. I would never do that. So please, please trust me. <laughs> um, no, seriously, like competition, you might think that I am, you know, a pushover. You might think that you're tough, but I am tougher, so. You should probably just give up now. If you're up against other contestants, will you be competitive in order to win the life-changing cash and prizes? Definitely. I mean, I will do whatever it takes. They might be fighting for just the competition of it. They might be fighting for just the money. I don't know what other people's motivations are, but all I know is that I am determined to do whatever it takes to win this competition for myself, for my family, for my future. Like everything's riding on it. And when you have something that's deep set that you're willing to do anything for, I feel like you can do more than you ever could when you just are doing it for fun or to be famous. Are you better at competing head to head or teaming up? I'm definitely better competing head to head. I know what's inside myself. I know what I can do and I don't have to explain it to anybody. I can just go by instinct and get it done. In a team, you have to be able to communicate your ideas and you have to work together, and I'm really good at working together, but not everybody always is. So if I had to choose, I would always rather do something on my own. Can you team. put a, a good act? Hold on, I'm not done yet. Oh, sorry, okay. <laughs> so rude! No, seriously, I'm done. <laughs> um, can you put a good act, can you put on a, now you screwed, on, now you screwed me up. Okay, can Get you- Get it together. Can you put Hurry on a, up. You're gonna let me finish. <laughs> Sorry. Can you put on a good act when you're working with people um, you don't like or is it hard for you to hide your feelings? Oh God, I suck at hiding my feelings. 
I, I don't know. I just never was very good at being, I don't know. I, I, I'm not very good at hiding my feelings and I don't think that's a bad thing. People know what they get with me. I am generally a nice person. I don't try to make trouble, but if you're being difficult or you're being rude or you know, whatever, whatever you're putting out, I'm going to react to that. So, you know, if you're being nice to me, I'll be nice to you. But if you're being a jerk, I probably will be a jerk too. On a lot of these shows, there's a lot of like archetypes. There's competitors, the sweetheart, the drama queen, the type A bitchy type. Who are you? Who are you calling a bitch? Just because I'm type A does not mean I am a bitch. I just know what I want and I know how it should be done. I think that that's, that's stereotyping. And I refuse to put up with this. I'm type A, okay, a little bit. I might be a little bitchy too. How do you handle stressful situations and how do you react to them? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> On the inside though. <laughs> no, when I'm stressed, I think everybody, they get all sweaty and they get really like shaky, but it's how you like channel that. I mean, I actually feel like when I'm stressed, I get like a pump of adrenaline and it just like like wires me and I get like really excited, but at the same time you feel pressure because a lot of things are on the line. So it, it's like hard to go through, but I think the more you handle stress, like the easier it gets. And at this point, you know, like stress almost feels fun, which is sick. That's horrible. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> what does baking and cake decorating mean to you? Baking and cake decorating, to me, it means freedom. Like, who gets to wake up and do what they actually love for a living and for for them to actually be good at it? I mean, that usually doesn't go hand in hand. So to me, I will do anything to continue doing what I love, what makes me feel alive and like passionate, like gives me a reason to wake up every day because I love it and I'm good at it. And I want to pass that on to future generations. Like. It means everything to me. And has it ever um, gotten you through a hard time? Definitely. I think that whatever your passion is, it, it's your passion because it like it, it's a it, it heals it heals you when you're going through stuff. So if I'm having a really hard time with something and I'm feeling really stressed out, that meditative state of sitting down to a project and like making something beautiful to make somebody happy. It, it helps you work through things that you can't put words to. It's like, you know, I don't know, it's just good for you. Why do you want to be on the show? Um, something to share, want to help breaking into the business, um, for your business, or like to be famous? I definitely don't want to be famous. I, it's just a means to an end. I, I feel like this show would be a great opportunity for me to not only win um, capital to help me open my own bakery but I feel like I also want to just kind of like tell my story and have people hear about everything that I don't know like I've gone through with my family that you know taking care of my sister going through all of these hard times overcoming it and because I relate to those stories I just think it would be so awesome for somebody to watch the show and be like wow this girl's gone through so much She's had these like horrible situations happen to her and her family and she's still having to go through it, but she still has time to dream. She still has time to put herself out there and not just time, but like emotional energy. You know, I want to be that type of inspiration to somebody else. Why should we pick you to be on the series? Cause I'm awesome. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think that I have everything that it takes, you know, skill wise. I think that I am an interesting person. I know that I could win. I do. I like, I wouldn't apply if I didn't feel like I could win. But I also feel like I'm not a typical person and that I would be interesting to watch. Whether I fail or succeed, it's, it's going to be a good show. <laughs>